Hello, Noble. What's up? Hey, not too much. So, okay, I am here with my friend. I'm Prophet, but, uh, you know, place. And this is uh, my friend literally right here. Yep, literally Hitler right now. How are you, Sorry. sir? I can't see you guys. No, no, our, our our show doesn't have our faces on it, so it's kind of oh, policy. Okay. okay, okay. Yeah, okay. I'm trying to well, keep my little... face. Is <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my face uh, is on there. All right, so we're gonna, gonna start off at the beginning um, where we left off. That's so we don't have our normal Facebook um, sarcasm that usually comes around and all that. That's just kind of par for the course. But uh, before we go, um, tell, tell us a little bit about what you're about. So, okay, so in other words, um, you had said that your uh, ideology, maybe even your religion, is comedic, and I know what that means. That's the old word for Egyptian in, I believe, Middle Kingdom. Well, okay, and... that's, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me interject real fast. No, no, I don't want you to interject. I want you to straight up tell us what you're about. So I just kind of wanted to start the ball rolling there. So, yeah, um, don't just interject. Tell us everything you want to tell us. Well, let me tell you, first of all, let me um, give you an understanding more about what comedic is. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Egypt is what what it was called after the conquerors came. So before any invaders came and changed the name, it was called Kemet, and before that it was Tamer, the beloved two lands, and then Kemet is the land of the black people. So you mean before the Ptolemies? Well, they weren't the first ones, but yeah. Okay. All right. But they're not the ones that changed the name of. They're not the ones that changed it to Egypt. Yeah. Well, I mean, everyone had another word that they used for it. I believe, yeah, the, the term, e I know the term Egypt came a little bit later. You probably know who it was that introduced the term. I don't remember who it was. But. Well, the whole thing, is when it comes to Egypt, I say that Egypt, when you look at the era of Egypt, that's when it was under European rule. Okay. Before Egypt, it was African rule. So there's a difference in cosmology and understanding and just cultures, period. Now, so your religion is centered around this, am I right? Would it, would it be right to say that? Yeah, you could say religion, but we don't use religion, but you could say that, though. All right, so it, it's it's central to your life. It's central to your ideology and your identity, uh, it'd be fair to say. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. Um, like, any animal that is, that's, that's uh, conducive to a certain environment, when you take it out of that environment and put it in another environment, you're going to get a different animal. Oh, well, yeah. Because absolutely. now it's... Absolutely. So that's what's going on. So okay. that's what's going on with black people right now. We're not in our indigenous place. We're not eating our indigenous food. So we've been altered. So would that be true so of anybody who's not in the same indigenous place that they were in 300 years ago? So Correct. in other words, uh, I might be, um, you know, I might be predominantly Italian. And uh, I, my, my bloodline hasn't been here very long at all. You know, so that would that Are mean? Italian? I'm mostly Italian, yeah. So <laughs> I'm also part Jewish. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, we can open that can of worms in a little bit. I'm sure that's going to be fun. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, but I'm saying, okay, so for my case, I would probably have to be one confused individual because I'm transplanted as well. Now, I got, I got, by my, by, I don't mean me, but we're talking, we're talking, uh, what, the lineage? Lineage as being the same thing as an individual. And I know that's typical in identitarian thinking. But I'm saying that, would that be true of anyone, not just me, anyone, or you, but anyone who is the descendant of somebody who was transplanted from their indigenous place? Yeah, um, well, you know, you have to look at certain things, like you have to look at the ecosystem, like how much, how different are the ecosystems? Like if you look at, um, if you look at Africa, it's in the Southern Hemisphere. So it's completely different than anything in the Northern Hemisphere. So, you know, America and Europe are both in the Northern Hemisphere. So you got a lot of similarities. So even if you were coming from, even if you was coming from Europe over to here, it would still be a lot of similarities. No, not down here in New Mexico, it ain't. <laughs> oh, y'all in New Mexico, yeah. huh? <laughs> yeah, right now we are, yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's hell. I just moved from Texas, so I, I, I know, I, and, and I live in Vegas, so I, I, I know what the heat like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty brutal. So it's nasty. Oh, yeah, 124 yeah. and all that kind of shit. <laughs> My great, great, great grandparents would not have been able to deal with this. <laughs> and that's with air conditioning. Yeah. Okay, but I don't want to, I don't want to divert too much. So you, you're saying that there is something that happens to, some, to a people when they're transplanted, regardless of who they are. 
what you're saying. Definitely. Okay. Def now, definitely. What do you think the symptoms of that are? Okay, so you're saying something changes in somebody when you move them. Yeah. Okay, like for instance, um, the first is the fastest way to domesticate an animal is through its food. Okay, so when you look at the food, when you look at our appetites, most of the food, excuse me, like 99% of the food that we eat when we came over here was was new to us. We didn't know nothing about it, and it changed us. Okay, hmm. so what kind of theories do you have about the kind of change that that would have caused? Because I don't doubt that that's true. I mean, you um, take a Native American and they can't handle their booze the way a white person did because they have thousands and thousands of years of swollen booze. And a Native American only has it in their genes for the last couple hundred years, and it, I've had plenty of Indian friends, and they can't hold their liquor. So I can see why you would say that. I'm definitely not going to argue that. I'll give you a point. wonderful, I, I, I'll give you a perfect example, diabetes 2. If you look at Africa, diabetes 2 does not run rampant out there. Actually, it's pretty rare out there. But if you look at here, it's the number one, it's like the number one disease of black people is diabetes 2. You know, it's funny. I have it. Yeah, my wife is black. <clears throat> and, um, That's true, mainly because of a high processed food, for yeah. sure. And she actually does yeah, have but, a lot of people in her family that have it. Don't exist. Those high processed foods don't exist in, over there. That is true, yeah. Never did. Very, very little of it. Well, it didn't exist over here back then, but, you know, back when the yeah, slave true. trade happened yeah, either. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, that shit's a product of the 20th century. Yeah. Of course, you yeah. had to deal with 19th century food, and that was crap, too. It was just a different kind of thing. Okay, well, let's deal with, let's deal with pigs. We didn't eat pigs in Africa, and pigs is very important, very bad for you. And Are you sure that's true of the whole continent? Didn't Egyptians eat pigs? Yes, I... they did. Okay. No, 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 no. Yes, they did, but it wasn't that. It wasn't like this is what you have to eat only. You see what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. the pig for us was like the main thing. That's why when you deal with a black family, especially in the South, they have so many variations of pig dishes down there, like pickled pig feet, pig ears, hog head cheese. Like the, the further you go away from the South, the less you're gonna have those. And you're saying I mean, that you someone on the West it. Coast, sorry, sorry. If you're saying on the West Coast of Africa, they wouldn't have been eating a lot of pigs during the slave trade then. Well, the slave trade is a different time than Egypt. Well, that's true. By the time, that's true. See what see what 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 people don't talk about in history. What is not mentioned in history, especially in public schools, is that the African people were enslaved not just for four hundred years by the European, but twelve hundred years by the Arabs before that. Ah, so we see, you don't hear this from black identitarians very much, but that's true. Hmm. Not for yeah. being black, so we just yeah. No, no, well, go ahead, go ahead. I want to hear. Um, when the Arabs enslaved us, it was it was all about class. It was just having, in order for us to raise ourselves, we need something underneath us. Mm -hmm. So they took us upon as like slaves and servants. It, they didn't know how to monetize us. The European monetized it. Well, yeah, because See, of that the, was the difference. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. You sure wouldn't been monetized because obviously they're selling p slaves at a profit. I mean, you would well, buy it was monetized. Huh? Now, now, by, by monetized, because obviously Arabs would buy slaves and sell them at a profit. I mean, no, even... no, no, no. That's not what I mean by monetize. I mean monetize the work. Like they got them strictly for an economic reason. Like I tell people, the beginning of slavery with, with the Europeans wasn't about hate. It was about economics. Oh yeah, and I, I don't think anyone like, argues that. Oh yeah, and and then yeah it's always about the money. Always yeah. about the money first, first, because yeah. after the two hundred years. Then that's when they came in with all the Jimmy Lynch stuff. Yeah. And the stuff to justify it and all that other stuff. But, okay. So, but, I mean, obviously, okay, so by monetize, you mean more of an in, more of a, uh, uh, an industrial sense of the word. Is it, well, is, well, that's what Europe, Europeans are the best at monetizing things on this country. Like, they sell shit, they sell dirt, they sell air. Well, we they were. They sell you shit. We were. The food. Chinese got us beat now. We had our day. The Chinese well, got us beat well, now. Well, well, the, well, the Chinese might be able to sell find a better, uh, um, find a better, uh, more, I don't, well, how would I say that? Uh, they might be able to, like, when I speak of monetize, I mean create money where there is none. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, there was no money in, there was no money in dirt, but the European monetized that. Now, if the Asian took it and took it further, that's another thing, but He's not. A, he he doesn't create. He doesn't create a monetized situation. He doesn't invent one, like a European can. Y'all just boy. Y'all y'all got that special little thing where y'all just turn anything into money. 
We were. We, we were. But, of course, uh, I don't know, Asians made Bitcoin. That was out of nothing. You know. But, yeah, okay. Historically speaking, oh, I understand I what you mean. Know. I didn't even know that. Oh, yeah, Asians Japanese made Bitcoin? Guy. Uh-huh. A Japanese guy, yeah. Oh, yeah. fuck. Yeah. That's a whole other, that's a whole other show. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Anyway, okay, so, all right. So, you go into can I, the... Hold on, can I, get, can I get one thing clear real fast? Yeah, go ahead. Clear real fast? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. This is funny because I actually put this on Facebook. I said it's funny now because it's funny how the roles change because now I feel myself defending myself like how Europeans used to defend themselves by saying, oh, you know, I got a black wife and mixed kids. I find myself doing that all the time. No, it's, easy to, it's an easy thing to get tempted to show do. People that. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. But you were married to a uh, white woman for a while yourself, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, 15 years. We have two kids. Yeah, yeah. So I don't hate white people, like, the things that I say don't come from hate. It just comes from I don't put emotion in information. Oh, well, it's good because that'll fuck I up just your deal with the information. sense of reality. Yeah. It's easy to do when you're in an argument, though. It's easy to get to get hot and under the collar, and you know, eventually get defensive. It's just human nature, you know. Oh yeah, the emotions really cloud your judgment, yeah. so it's it's very hard to fall into that device. Okay, but you, you say you don't hate white. I, people. I mean, easy. Yeah. <laughs> it's easy to fall. <laughs> yeah. <Sorry>. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so you, you didn't, you know, you, you don't hate white people enough that you were married to a white for a woman. That's kind of why I brought up my wife a minute ago, because we have this in common, is that we both crossed, you know, o over and whatnot. Um, so you don't hate well, white check people. Check this out. Yeah. I was, check this out. I was born in Salt Lake City, Utah. Oh, damn. Now, that, damn. that must have been interesting. <laughs> damn, home of, the, home of the Mormons. <laughs> yeah, because you're, you're, about, you're about 30, 32 years old, hey. right? Yeah. No, I'm 37. Okay, so you were around while there were still Mormons teaching, and you had the mark of Cain then, right? Or yeah, they stopped they doing teach, that by then? Yeah, yeah, they used to teach that we had. They used to teach that we had tails when they're not around that our tails would come out. <laughs> they used to say that about the Jews, not the <laughs> yeah. Mormons, but uh, the Catholics used to say that about the Jews. Okay, so um, did you ever hear any of this? Okay, like the mark of Cain doctrine that they taught black people had the mark of Cain and they were cursed by God. Did you ever hear that as a kid in Utah? Yeah. Yeah, I, I had the like, holy tablet books where it shows John Smith finding the tablets in the ground and shit. Like, Joseph, when, when my mom checking. first moved out there, <laughs> right. yeah, Joseph Smith, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, Joseph Smith, the uh, the Freemason, um, he was open too. That's the funny part about it. And I asked Mormons about that, and they're like, oh, so? And I'm like, okay, he took an oath. Well, some of them the deny it. Says, he was a Mason, but some of them deny it for some reason. Well, I got to ask, so you grew up in Utah to uh, is the whole polygamy thing still prominent, or is that like a dying art over there? No, you got to be in like a little town in order to accept that. But you know what's funny mm. about polygamy is the natural way, though. So in a lot of ways it is. I know, uh, yeah, nobody's arguing the idea that if a guy can get away with having one or two women or four or five women, that he's going to do it. I mean, more pussy is better than less. We're all men here. We don't have to, like, <laughs> beat around the bush on that one. So, word up, word yeah, up. Yeah. Um, I'm not, yeah, you're not going to get any uh, virtue signaling on, uh, on on everything that's wrong with that from us. Yeah, but um, it's the human sexuality is complicated as hell. But if there's one thing that is, can be damn certain, it's that men aren't uh, naturally programmed to only fuck one girl for the rest of their life. <clears throat> so, okay, so you say you know, you, I, well, I show I right, like to ahead. show people like this just real fast, and then and then and then I won't carry it on. But I like people like this. I say, well, you know, I don't I don't argue nature. I don't argue what is apparent. A tree is standing there. I'm not arguing that a tree is fucking standing there. Yeah, that's good. So I, I, I do more like, if you look at the ratio of how many women are born to how many men, it's set up for it to be way more women. So either it's set up for women to be lonely. If they, if monogamy is real, then that means that nature is already setting up for women to be lonely, all these women to be lonely, or polygamy, where you can impregnate. I mean, the whole point is to multiply. I mean, we all know that. Well, uh, yeah, and maybe that, that should not be a priority right now. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Certainly, back in the times when you know disease was running rampant and we didn't have modern medicine on our side, yeah, it was, it was a. Uh, yeah, you certainly had to do that. And men were dying off in war constantly, so that would mean a surplus of women uh, about every fifteen, twenty years. But yeah, there's all this. There's all this you. nuance. I lost you guys for like. Oh, I'm sorry. Seconds. Can you hear us now? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure. okay so what I was saying is like, yeah, the. So, yeah, definitely, at a time right now, we don't need to fuck as many women to, you know, populate, because in most areas, yeah, population's kind of getting out of hand, but, yeah. Easy, and, and, easy. Let's not say <laughs> we can't fuck as many women as we want. We're just not trying to have too many kids, that's all. Right. Mm. 
No, it certainly, yeah, back in the time when it, it certainly wasn't necessary when we... So you believe in, so you believe in science? So, sorry, so sorry, So you what? believe in eugenics? Do I believe in eugenics? So you believe in eugenics? Uh, I believe in voluntary uh, eugenics to the point where when you overpopulate, you have to consider that there's long-term consequences, and many nations have learned that. Uh, lesson the hard way. Science. I don't believe in government-imposed eugenics, no. Uh, I believe in uh, using people's greed um, as, a way of, uh, as a way of encouraging them to not overpopulate, absolutely. But do I believe that the governments So the how world... do you know when there's an overpopulation? You don't. Uh, but uh, with <laughs> you, you don't. But the reality is, is that um, there are those of us who look at the world and say uh, 7 billion is just a couple billion too many. And uh, any of us who look at the garbage and the pollution and whatnot, and we think, you know what, maybe we've got too many of us shitting and shitting in the in the in the sewers, and we got too many of us, you know, doing this and that. So I don't think I don't think we should be having twelve kid families anymore, if that's what you're saying. Now, well, and, and uh, on my personal opinion, like <clears throat> uh, China, who had a rule because their population was getting was getting so out of hand, where they had a rule regulating, you know, one child per family. And I don't know. They don't have that now. Yeah, actually, uh, I remember they they relieved it. Now it's uh, two per family because yeah, I don't know for whatever reason. I guess uh, the population growth is starting I to slow down. By the way, yeah, I want to be very clear on this. I, I am not a fan of government stepping in and taking a part in that. Uh, beyond uh, beyond okay. yeah, I I am not a fan of that kind of eugenics. Eugenics is typically where you're intentionally imposing rule, whereas uh, the system that we live in now kind of does it on its own. Uh, the, the, if you have too many kids, that's more to pay for. It's not like in the old days where your kids helped you on your farm. And it was actually profitable to have yeah. more kids, you know. So uh, for me, it's just a matter of letting the natural order take care of it rather than eugenics. So no, I'm not a eugenics fan at all. Um, so I don't... basically you're saying that um, family's not a business anymore. Family's not a business anymore, exactly. If anything, it's an anti-business, you know. Um, but does that mean that people shouldn't be able to have large families if they want to? Absolutely not. Uh, I, I, I am a big fan of keeping the government the hell out of that argument and out of that decision making. Because then, because sooner or later you have people su su selecting mm -hmm. who breeds. I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Do you agree? Uh, do you agree? Do you, do you, are you pro government or anti government? That's a that's a that's not a yes. Or, that's not an anti or pro question. Do I believe that some government is completely necessary uh, to stop complete anarchy and um, and to create a stable society that we can live long enough past twenty years old at best? Uh, some government in laws, but 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 less is better than more. Yeah, so. I, I'm certainly on the same boat. Uh, yeah, you know, th there's a little little nuance to it. I'm I'm you know pro limited government, very limited. Neither of us are anarchists, if that's what you mean. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know what's funny is that oh. we can't even call it. A... No, go no, on. No, go ahead, finish, bro. Okay, that, that's it. We we believe in some government, but very you know, limited. I... Very. Oh. The God is going to put a burning. God's going to put a cancer in the butthole. 